Ah, oh, time travelers, welcome. And welcome new time travelers. As always, if you're new to this channel and enjoy learning about history, one event at a time, not only from the US, but from around the world, then don't forget to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe. Without further ado, let's get into it. Today we're gonna go all the way back to 168 BCE when the Romans defeated the Macedonians under King Perseus at the Battle of Phida, which marked the end of the Macedonian monarchy and allowed Romans, Rome's excess of Macedonia. Now, after I'm done with the presidents of the United States, I'm not sure which country I'm going to head to for their head of state. I'm probably going to head to Canada just to stay on the North America and then go from there. But I'm not quite sure. I have to figure that out yet. Moving on. On this day in 1611, English explorer Henry Hudson, who earlier had tried to discover a short route from Europe to Asia through the Arctic Ocean, was set adrift with his son and seven others in the Hudson Bay by mutineers. Um, 22 years later, in 1633, Accused of hearsay, or yeah, hearsay, by the Inquisition, Galileo was forced to rescind his support of the Copernican system, which held that the sun was the center of the solar system. Moving on to 1815, when Napoleon abdicated as French emperor for the second time. Uh, in 1887, English biologist and philosopher Julian Hollux, who greatly influenced the modern development of embryology, was born in London. 1906 is when American motion picture director and producer Billy Wilder, who was known for films that humanously treat subjects of controversy and offer a biting indictment of hypocrisy of American life, was born in Sakana, Saka. Australia, which is now Poland. Four years later, in 1910, Catherine Dunham, an African-American dancer, choreographer, and anthropologist noted for her innovative interpretations of primitive, ritualistic, and ethnic dances was born. 1937 brought us Camille Catapas, a radical socialist, forms a new French popular font cabinet that includes ex premier Leon Blim. Uh, three years later, in 1940, with an invading German, German force at its door in mid-June of 1940, the French government under the leadership of Marshal Philip Pinton signed an armistice with Germany, thereby ceasing uh, Valencia, France, uh, also known as the French state. Nin the following year, in 1941, German Germany voted the German-Soviet Non-Aggression Pact of 1939 and attacked the Soviet Union during World War II. 
Fourteen years later, in 1955, the animated musical Lady and the Tramp, one of Walt Disney's most endearing movies, was released in U.S. theaters. And when I was growing up, that was actually one of my favorite movies. Um, 1969, in Cleveland, the several polluted Caboria River caught on fire when an oil slick floating on the surface ignited. Although it was not the first fire in the river, the incident generated national attention and led to anti-pollution measures that subsequently improved the river's condition. Moving on to 1978, when Charon, the largest moon of Pluto, was discovered. 1981 is when Champion Chapman pleads guilty to Leon or Lennon murder. I'm not quite sure what that case was about. Five years later, in 1986, Argentine football American soccer player, or also known as American soccer, player Diego Miranda scored his memorable Hand of God goal. Uh, the ball struck his hand, but the referee mistakenly thought it hit his head to help Argentina defeat England in the World Cup quarterfinal game. Argentina went on to win the tournament. Uh, moving on to three years after the turn of the century, in 2003, a law goes into effect in Tucumanston, providing, proving people or preventing people from holding both Russian and Turk Turkmen passports. Panic struck in ethnic Russians have been fleeing Turkmenistan for weeks. And finally, in 2008, American comedian George Carlin, whose seven words you can never say on television routine led to U.S. Supreme Court ruling that gave the Federal Commission's Communication Commissions, the FCC, the right to determine when to censor radio and TV broadcasts, passed away at the age of 71. And with that, we return to 2024 and our current history. I'll see you guys in the next one.